your hands together for Patrick Ramirez. Hey, everybody. Hi, Burbank. Make some noise. Who's here for the first time tonight? Yeah, a couple people. Who's here for the last time tonight? Yeah. <laughs> This is great. I feel good. I have a birthday coming up. Always excited when you have a birthday coming up. I'm excited. My birthday's coming up. It's been coming up for about um, 11 months now. <laughs> Super excited. I'm really happy because I haven't celebrated my birthday in like a whole year. <laughs> Our age is so important to us. You know, you think about it, it's so important to us. You ever hear someone say to you something like they had a birthday and then they just tell you all the things they can't do anymore? Like, oh, had a birthday, can't go jogging, can't stay out late, spicy food, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. At some point, they'll put it on YouTube. They're like, you'll see, you'll see. And then they'll tell you their age, and they're actually younger than you. <laughs> like, hey, I don't think you're getting old. I think you just lived wrong. <laughs> I saw a headline today that I reacted to. I saw a headline that said, the city has rezoned its streets and you can now get a parking ticket even if the parking meter isn't installed yet. LA is back, everybody, we did it. <laughs> Woo, we made it, we turned the corner on that one. A couple forest fires, you know, we'll be there. I feel like I can breathe again. <laughs> I love seeing people out. It makes me feel better when everybody's out, having a good time. Then I thought this, this is really weird. You ever see someone announce to a crowd that they're sober? And everybody applauds. They say, you know, good job. You're sober. Keep it up. That's great. Then you can say to that same crowd, hey, who's drinking tonight? Exact same reaction. <laughs> it's like, who, is, who do we root for? I don't know. It's like, I'm sober. Woo! Let's drink. Yeah! It's like, can you root for both teams like that? It's really weird how we react to things like that because we do the opposite with drugs. You ever hear someone say, oh, I'm clean and sober, 10 years. We go, good job, yeah, keep it up, that's great. One day at a time. Then someone says, I never touched a drug in my life. We all go, pussy. <laughs> I have sober friends now. I don't know when that started. They're like, sober friends, we all have them. I'm up to my fourth one. How do I know my friends are sober? Certainly wasn't from me asking them. <laughs> He'll let you know, man. You're like, hey, dude, dude, sober. It's like, I asked what time it is. <laughs> like, is it raining out sober? They'll let you know. You know what? A big part about getting sober is hitting rock bottom. That is a big deal. They always say, like, oh, you know, you're like, when you hit rock bottom, that's when you change. You got to hit rock bottom to make a change. Here's the thing about that if you say you hit rock bottom, you better hope you're right. <laughs> it's like, did you hit rock bottom or was it just a long day? And it's always the biggest deal. Like, no one ever says, like, did you hit rock bottom? Nah. And go way further. <laughs> I'm ambitious. I grew up in Texas, and there's a lot of misconceptions about Texas. I feel like I have to explain what that state is to a lot of people. A lot of people don't know, though, that some of the nicest, warmest people live in Texas. Everybody says, oh, there's nice people in my hometown. But Texas, nicest, warmest people, so nice, they'll give you the gun off their back. They'll do it. I was out somewhere, and they're like, where's your gun? And I left it at home. Kitty, go to your purse. Get him my gun. He looks cold. <laughs> they're like, there you go, son. You look better with that gun. That's my church gun. That's a good gun. <laughs> Keep that with you. I had good friends growing up in Texas, too. I went to high school with a guy who was super smart. In high school, he was voted most likely to secede. <laughs> yeah, that's where I grew up. I've lived in five different cities in my life, too. Every city is different. I've lived in five different ones. Like, you know you live in a crap city when someone asks you where you live, and you just list the distance it is from a major city. <laughs> You're like, where you live? Seven miles outside of Dallas, right in there. You know, San Francisco, 35 miles over the hill, weather dependent, right there. <laughs> the further away you live from somewhere, the easier you make it sound to get there, too. Like, oh, oh, Denver, you know, two buses, hop on the freeway, under a fence, put up a flare, they'll see you. <laughs> yeah. I've lived in a lot of cities. It's cool, though. I love that comedy is coming back, but I will say this is a tough time for comedy. Sometimes people's perspectives of comedy is different, and you have to explain and defend it. I was talking to a woman, and we were having a great conversation, and I thought in my head, this is going great. I'm going to ask this woman out on a date. She said, what do you do? I said, oh, I'm a comedian. She said, uh-oh, 
Uh oh, no, no, no. I don't think I could ever date anyone who makes their living as a comedian. I said, oh yeah, well joke's on you because I don't make a living at it. Who's dumb now? <laughs> I'm two years away from being two years away from something. That's how I knew I hit rock bottom. Thank you, everybody.